for me as a pilot and athlete, the next 13 minutes will be a big challenge. Because being here at stage and speaking English, it's not my strength. My strength is out in the nature. My passion is flying. I've been flying my paraglider since I'm 16, and I have been a professional pilot for eight years now. So I'm here today with Thomas to explain this passion to you a bit closer. Next summer, there is a big adventure. It is called the Red Bull X Alps. It is an adventure race across the Alps from Salzburg in Austria, passing eight checkpoints on the way to Salzburg, in the, uh, to Monaco in the south of France. There are only 30 international athletes selected and invited by the organization committee can participate. All of them have to travel only by foot or up in the air by paraglider. Each of them is allowed one supporter. We take him to provide food, information, and can follow him by car. So the first team who arrives in Monaco wins the race. The main fascination of this race is that it is full of unknowns. You cannot plan in advance not the route, not the duration of the race. Actually, if it's good flying weather and a lot of flying is possible, the race would last one week. But if it rains a lot and the athletes have to walk, it would last three weeks. Another fascination of the race is that it takes you through the most amazing landscapes and nature. But what makes this event really unique is that thanks to a GPS live tracking system, the whole world can follow every single move of the athletes. And in 2011, around one million people did so. So x is a combination of two sports. As a pilot, I have to carry my whole flying equipment. It's about 10 kilo while walking. And up in the air, we change. The equipment carries me. Between the checkpoints, each team is free to choose the route they want. So in good weather, for example, you walk up a mountain to fly as far as possible. On the best days, 220 Ks are the records per one flight in seven hours. So just using the wind and the thermals like a bird. If it rains or at night, the athletes have to travel by foot. As you can see, it needs a lot of tactical thinking, whether to climb a mountain and to fly or just to walk on a road in a valley. Especially at night, you have to decide by self if you take the time for sleeping and recover or you keep walking to make distance. We know this race well because we took part twice and we won twice. And now we want <laughs> to participate again in the next edition in 2013. And because it is a real adventure, we know quite well that we don't know what to expect the next time. At the moment, we are beginning our preparation and the training for the next summer, and therefore we are analyzing what was key for success the last two times. And there are a lot of different important things, but in this short talk, we want to focus on three of them. On preparation, on teamwork, and on coolness. <laughs> okay? Preparation. Preparation can save life. For example, flying a paraglider in high mountains is an adventure. You never know what exactly to expect. And most of the time, you can't stop the flight immediately. If you are running a marathon, for example, you can stop at any moment and give up. But while flying over a glacier where landing is not possible, you have to know exactly what to do. Otherwise, it can quickly become dangerous. The paraglider itself its a very simple flying machine. It is about four kilo. It's 25 square meters, and you can fold it and carry it in a backpack. Therefore, it is very sensitive, and it, ha it can collapse up in turbulent air, or if I do a piloting mistake. As a professional test pilot, it's my job to test new wings at the limit. But for sure, it's sometimes it needs a lot of nerve to be there in the air. And but on the other hand, it shows me exactly me as an athlete, where the limits are. We think it's very, very important to know the limits very well. The limits of your equipment and the limits of your body and your mind. 
Because only when you are fully aware of the limits, you are ready and prepared enough to get close to them, but never beyond. Knowing the limits of a paraglider is quite simple and it's visible, but it's more difficult to know the limits of your body and your mind and to know how to deal with stress and exhaustion and how to cope and recover from it. So a very big part of the preparation was to learn more about our limits. And therefore, we did, for example, some performance tests. These tests helped us a lot to learn more about us and to define small but important things like heart rate and speed for walking on a street or the hours of sleep we need in a night to continue the next day or the number of calories to keep the performance. And all this know-how together was very important that Christian was able to flourish and to perform at his very best during such a long race over 1,000 kilometers. Let's talk about teamwork. Teamwork was really important in preparation and in the race. I could not have won this race without Thomas. I needed a partner to push me, but sometimes also to slow me down. So he was really important to me. He was my motivator. He was my coach. But in the race, also our coke. He was my mountain guide and also my nurse. And now we would like to show you an example of really good teamwork from the race 2009 in the following clip. The situation was as follows. It was on day seven. We got stuck in a small valley in Italy. It was close to the high mountains of Monte Rosa. We've been very, very tired, but we wanted to get to Monaco as fast as possible. Therefore, we decided to take a shortcut, and the shortcut was to climb up this wall. Climbing up was difficult, and next to the mountaineering equipment, we, Christian also had to carry his paraglider and his flying equipment. And we managed somehow to get up there, but on the glacier, the situation beca became even more difficult. As you can see, it was very flat, and there was no wind, and it was too flat to take off with a paraglider. So we've been quite frustrated, even if it was a nice scenery. <laughs> and we were talking about that we have to hike down on the other side. But then, as a team, we saw that we have more options, and we managed to um, overcome this challenge by a very unusual situation, a uh, solution. And the solution was that we tried to make a toe takeoff by using the climbing rope. So for this, I inflated my glider like for a normal takeoff. Then Thomas started running as fast as possible <laughs> with the climbing rope to pull me about 20 meters up in the air like a kite. So I was able to fly away and to cross the flat part and continue to the next turn point, the Matterhorn. I was airborne finally, and I was really happy to be on the fastest way to Monaco. But I felt very sorry for Thomas, you can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had to go all the way back by himself, including climbing 2,000 meters down the wall to take the car. But that's also part of good teamwork. Sometimes you have to go different ways to reach the same goal. Now, coolness. <laughs> The most difficult thing in an adventure race like this is keeping cool under competition pressure. In paragliding, it's often about the right balance between serious fighting and just letting go. And in the x alps race, sometimes it's the fastest to wait at the takeoff place an hour or two or even half a day till the conditions are good. That means the thermals are strong and you can fly very fast with a glider instead of simply walk. But that, re that needs really a lot of nerve and coolness to sit there and wait in the competition situation and try to eat and use the time to relax, like here at the first turn point close to the start in Salzburg, while you see that the other athletes push hard and make distance. Yes, and it's true that I'm really tried to keep my, con uh, my, my emotions under control, especially in a race like this. To me, coolness also means being open-minded. 
So don't always stick to your fixed plan or tactics. Sometimes you, have, you just need to follow the wind. My personal hero about coolness or being open-minded, it's my son, Jonas. He is two, he has no preconceptions, he just lives in the moment and asks a plenty of questions. And I'm really impressed how this attitude helps him to make the best of every new situation. We found out that being at the front of the race gave us the confidence to make fast and mistake-free progress. And in the last two editions, maybe we had the luck to be in this situation, and the bigger the advance, the more confident we became, and this helped us to make good decisions and to eat and sleep maybe more than the others. And all this together made us faster and faster again. So the very big challenge for us now is to learn to get into this mindset of being at the front of the race and to stay cool regardless of the current position in the ranking. Yeah, you can do a lot of talking and thinking about an adventure race like this here indoors on a stage, but out there in the real nature, in a real adventure, many emotions are brought into play. And to follow your heart and your stomach is as important as tactics, strategy, and clever thinking. With the last clip, maybe you will understand the reason why we will take up the Exalt Challenge for a third time again, with all its risk and pain. But I really feel alive when I'm flying. I just love being alone up in the air with my paraglider and feel the power of the nature. And the feeling of finally arriving after 11 hard days, totally 1,380 kilometers of traveling, this feeling is just incredible. There are now exactly 262 days left till the start of the next Exalps adventure race. And there's a lot to do. But you all know now that we too will focus on three things. On preparation, on teamwork, and on coolness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.